Alright, you're with Al, and this is Chronicles of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. So, last week's video, being the Biff, we were looking at swing speed technique with the 7 iron, which I'll link up there. And we finished the video off with a bit of a swing speed off, which I'm not going to give anything away, but... <laughs> After that, I was obviously well happy, like, far too happy. I was like, right, let's go in, do the driver straight away, get in there, smash it, and... I went from like positive fist pump out to Did someone's house that? Got in someone's house that. I feel like your head's off here. Literally got in someone's house that. Oh, we got angry Al back. It's got in someone's house. Like your head was off over there in the houses. Kind of taught me a lesson that, and I know this anyway, but your practice has got to be structured, it's got to have purpose, you've got to know what you're going in to do, and rather than just going in willy nilly trying to smash drivers as hard as you can. I did film that video, so if you want me to post that, I can post it. Let me know in the comments below. So, I got my head, put it back on my shoulders, come back the next day fresh. The Biff's going to break down, Wisdom Biff is proper out, by the way, in this. He's going to break down the technique with 7 iron, see why I'm actually quick with 7 iron compared to driver. And then we'll finish off the video with a swing speed update with driver and see if I can get past that 121 mile an hour that I got to a couple of weeks ago. Also, see if I can leave his garage in one piece, which would be good. So, over to the Biff's. Smash it. These are just regular seven irons, these. Bit of path left, that's probably the speed I'm looking at. 92 mile an hour. Pretty nice little fader, quite typical really. You know, fairly consistent, pretty straight, not gonna be too far from the old, you know, 2.2 left with the path, 2.5 face to path, so, you know, little fade. One more normal one. I like a good move. That's a bit of a big fade actually. That's why I do, I feel if I don't open my body enough, I leave the club face open. That's kind of the control I really need to work on. That's good, that's hit me in the ankle as well. Like I say, they're pretty typical numbers, 93.9 speed. 179 carry, club path 1.6 left, face the path a little bit open, just struggling a little bit with controlling club face at the minute, swing direction 4.5 to the left. So yeah, they're fairly typical, I'm just going to hit a couple smash ones now and just have a look at how the numbers change, so pushing towards that 100 mile an hour, right, full out jobbies, 99.4, best swing I've made. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of numbers there that we're going to look at. You know what? I don't need to hit any more of that. That's going to show us all we need to know. Let's bring in Wisdom Biff. Two of the numbers I want to look at with Al is his launch angle. Now, if we look at his first sort of normal, useful swing, swinging it at 90, just under 94 mile an hour, you can see his launch is up at 19.4. Now, he's hitting 7.9. The standard loft of a 7 iron is around about 34 to 35 degrees. What you actually want is your launch angle to be roughly half that which it is, but slightly on the higher launch side of things. So for Al, what you see Al do through impact is rather than hold the pressure, wasn't as bad as I made it look. Al will lose that ever so slightly and it will point a little bit too straight up at him which will give him a little bit more launch that way. What you see when he goes really at it, that now jumps up to 23 degrees which double that, that's 46, that's almost wedge launch, well it, it is wedge launch which again means that now through the ball rather than turning and compressing it, he's actually let the club pass him so to gain the speed He's, he's let the club whip past him. That's where the speeds all come from. So if we're talking and I'm hitting a golf shot, I'd like to see that down at about 17 degrees. Well, there we go. 16.5, 33 degrees. I put the, cor the correct amount of pressure on that golf ball for the launch that I'm trying to achieve. Good aside what you see when you look back at Al's is because he's added that loft on, even though he swung it faster, the ball's actually gone a shorter distance. So for Al, 
He needs to work harder in compression because then he's going to get the distance he wants, but the body's then going to control that because the body's open at the same speed. So we talk about the irons going the same distance, that's because the central body movement that we have moves at the same speed. It's hard to gain speed from just body, especially with the irons. You need a bit of arm travel and a little bit of club whip to actually do it. Point of experiment, let's try and hit one a little bit harder now. This might just take me a couple just to wind that up, because I don't want to get injured. But let's have a go. Let's see if this changes anything on those numbers for me. That jumps up to 98, and my launch angle now goes to 20 degrees. Again, double that. It's into 40 degrees launch. That's 99, really. So you can see that I've actually lost the launch, and again, the carry distance hasn't changed. To gain that speed, because I've had to do that through the ball. That's where the speeds come from. Very interesting that, what Biff just said, and it kind of makes it clear in my head, kind of where I need to go with my work, and certainly my speed work anyway. And it goes hand in hand with one, improve my iron play and being able to control the club face a little bit more, and two, gaining more speed with driver. For me, I think I'm pretty much maxed out with driver. And that the reason really for that, exactly what Biff said, is through the ball, I've got more speed in my hands, so that's where I gain more speed because I'm actually doing that. The club, club head is past my hands, and you can imagine if I've got that whip at the bottom, that's more speed. Paul is actually swinging it fast, but still has pressure on it, so very much similar club head speed, but to get the similar club head speed, I have to physically speed the club head up, whereas Paul is quicker in his body, so his body works much harder than mine. Which is why when you look at his launch, being when he tries to absolutely smash it, was 19 and mine, what was mine? No, uh, yours was 19 normal and mine was 20 when I tried to smash it, so. Yeah, so Paul's smash is similar to my normal. So you can imagine then, Paul has still got more speed to add if he was to actually speed his hands up and he matches that in with the body, then he's gonna be way past me, which is why with driver, I'm basically putting a driver swing on my seven iron. So I don't really have any more speed to gain out of driver. Whereas the Biff quite easily just adds a bit of speed in his hands with driver and immediately he's pretty much up to 125 without any real issue. Whereas I've already maxed out. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly that. What you're saying is, if I was to launch my seven iron up at yours at 23, yeah. I'd add more speed in the bottom yeah. So then, I'd actually be able to swing it even faster. So technically, I should be able to swing seven iron at 102, 103. Yeah, so exactly. So I've got more whip than at the bottom. Yeah. But all I do is I transfer that body speed to the driver with that whip at the bottom is why I can then swing it five, six, seven miles an hour faster than you. So for me, working the body harder, making sure that it's turning harder, Body's moving faster, more pressure on the ball, club face stays more stable, more square. I can actually swing it at similar speed that I was at 93, because the body's working harder without the speed coming from the hands. Straighter shots with the irons, but giving me more speed with the driver because I can actually add that hand whip, which you want a little bit more with driver, because you want to actually hit it up. So I'm gonna make one, I'm just gonna make one swing with seven iron and feel pressure. Body's gonna work hard and then try and get it launching somewhere near. 16 and a half, this might be difficult, but. Well, that's very difficult to do. This is a horrendous strike. And I'm still launching at 17 and a half, so still, still launching pretty high. Swing speed update now. Let's get the driver out, work the body hard, see where we're at. I was 121 last time with Biff's driver, so anywhere around that, I'm happy and then I am training hard. I think we might need to do a video on training. Okay. Right. Couple of ramp ups, let's give it some. It's funny now we've pointed that out, I actually feel slow in the body. I feel like I can swing it faster. But I actually can't swing it faster with my hands and arms. This is gonna work. This is gonna be my swing speeds now. Three shots, maximum, what can I do? 
Got to be honest, knowing what I know now, I think I'm going to struggle to get past that 121 that I did the other day. But, I know why. So, normally, I would get seriously pissed off, probably go off, a bit of a fume, kind of like I did that yesterday. Not today. Positive Al. I know what I've got to do. Three shots, come on. This is it, Beth, this is it. Come on, son. Straight away, straight okay. away, 121. Come on, son. Okay, we're not. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, got a couple more. That's a relief. I need a tea. Where's the teas? There we go. Come on, Alan. That's a relief. As much as I said I know what I've got to do, I know I've not lost speed, so we've not gone backwards. Let's try and up it. That's what I got to last time with this drive, I've it. Quick back swing, remember that technique, quick back swing, push up, high, down, and up through it. Felt quick, come on more, ooh, 120.7, 120.7. Well that one's good, that one's, that one's, that one's straight. It's raw straight there. Yeah. Bosh. What, did you carry it? 314.6 carry, 180 ball speed, attack angle 6, club path 0.4 to the left, face to path 0.7, it's so neutral. Come on. Right, this is it. This is last one. Last one. We'll have a chat. Come on, Al. Come on, Al. Twenty-one. That's an excellent drive. That is. It's just spun a little bit. Spun at three-three, but one point five club path, face path two point five down the left of the fairway. One eighty, one point five ball speed. One twenty-one. And that's with my drive, not the long dog. Yeah, not long dog. So we're still at one twenty-one with this. Should we hit one with long dog just for a laugh? Just for a laugh. Just one shot. We're feeling fast. Oh, long dog. Just for a bit of shits and giggles, this really. Never got that turn, shits and giggles. I've never giggled at the shit. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, that's a terrible driver. That's a terrible driver. What did you swing it at? 120.5. Well, you're gonna have another go, aren't you? Yeah, that's always the way, yeah. <laughs> one more, one more, one more, one more. That's so far right, let's go and have a chat. It's actually not that far right, it's quite a good swing. Let's go and have a chat. What have we learned? Well, you know what, we learned a lot. Yeah. I think we learned actually more than what we knew. Yeah, exactly that. I think, you know, the massive thing there that you can see is that my body's just a bit more efficient than his, but his hand speed's better than mine, which is why, obviously, I've got a little bit more in the tank with driver. The only other thing as well is, I'm six foot one, you're four foot. <laughs> <laughs> you are a knob. Well, how, how tall are you, seriously? I am like five foot nine at a push. Right, so at a push. So really, if you're going proportionally, my arms are gonna be slightly longer than his. I'm using a driver that's an inch longer as well. So the radius, if you think about it, from my left arm down to the actual club head, is gonna be a good few inches longer. Yeah, your, your levers, when we talk about getting it high, yeah, like exactly. Tree, the tree. you can get it higher. Well, the other side of it as well, you've shown just by adding an inch onto driver or two inches onto driver, how much faster that can be as well. Yeah. So you imagine overall, it's gonna be a lot, lot quicker. Yeah. So I just need to grow, basically. Exactly that. But actually, you know, it, it just makes it clear because we know why we're similar with, with irons. Whereas in reality, you're actually hitting them further because you're compressing it at a lower speed. Yeah, so if I if I was to add in three degrees more launch, so get my 20 degree fast one up to his 23, technically I should be hitting it, I should be swinging it two or three mile an hour again with the irons. Whereas I've got catching up to do because if I start working this better, bosh, catching them up. 
Absolutely. keep the hand speed in driver, pressure it more with irons, right. more control with club face and everything. Just improves. So, That's why speed improves everything. Still 121 on the smash. Good shots as well, by the way. 181 and a bit ball speed. The second one was like oh, absolute frozen, frozen rope. rope. I think technique's improving. Got to keep at it, keep smashing it. Get in the gym, grow some hair. Thanks for watching. See you next Tuesday. See you down the line.